Hi, and welcome to this video tutorial about sheet by wall design, SPW, where I'm gonna show you the main characteristics of the GeoStru software I'm to the design and analysis of sheet by walls through an applied example. Anyway, in case you need help to analyze your cases, feel free to contact us. We are here, available to help you. Well, let's get started. This is the window that you will see when you open the software. First of all, it is necessary to define the general data of the model using the specific button. In particular, it is possible to choose the standards to refer to in the analysis, referring to the geotechnical and structural problems. In this example, we will refer to Eurocodes. Besides, it's possible to define the theory for the calculation of the active thrust and the passive resistance both in static and seismic conditions. There is also the possibility to choose the point of application of the seismic action in case of pseudostatic analysis. This software performs the analysis of sheet bell walls employing both the limit equilibrium method and the finite element method. From this section, we can choose which method we want to refer to. In this example, we are going to employ the finite element method. We can also choose to perform or not the analysis of the vertical bearing capacity choosing eventually a proper value of the safety factor. Finally, here we can assign the longitudinal extension of the wall. Before moving to the definition of the geotechnical model, I would like to show you the panel archives, from where we can manage the archives of everything about the structural aspects of the wall. We can define a database of structural materials, sections, anchor string courses and anchors that we will employ later for our sheet bell wall. The materials archive includes the main classes of concrete and types of steel, referring to the constitutive laws defined by the standards. However, the user has also the possibility to update the database by changing the materials or adding new ones. From this button we can manage the sections archives. Also in this case, we can find some different type predefined sections, such as reinforced concrete circular section, rectangular section, or even steel concrete coupling beams. Obviously, the user can change the existing sections or create new ones, referring to the different options available in the section list. In this example, we create a circular reinforced concrete section. We can choose the concrete from those in the database previously defined. For example, we will use here the class C2835, whereas about the steel reinforcement, we will use B450C. Let's assign the name to the section and define the diameter, for example, 80 cm. In this case, we choose the single row arrangement, but the queen conks and double row options are also available. And then we define the spacing between piles, in this case 1 meter and 20 centimeters. As a consequence, the software calculates the area, the moment of inertia, and the modulus of elasticity of the section. This button allows us to manage the database for the anchor string courses. Finally, here we can manage the database of anchors. Also in this case, the user can add different topologies with the desired characteristics. In this application, we will use one type already present in the database. At this point, it's possible to define the geotechnical model of our problem. Let's start from the stratigraphy. In this window, we have to insert the geotechnical parameters of the soil that are located in the site of interest. We can insert the parameters manually on the basis of the results of the geotechnical investigation previously done. In this video, I will use some soils included in the software database for time reasons. Anyway, it's necessary to update the overconsolidation ratio. We can here assume that all soils are normally consolidated. Therefore, OCR equals 1. Besides, we will refer to a dry soil. Therefore, the permeability does not influence the results. Finally, we have to assign the thickness of any layer and the inclination. 
In this case, we will assume that the first layer is 4 meters thick, the second one is 6 meters thick, and finally the third one is 10 meters thick. We also assume here that all layers are horizontal. For the sake of completeness, we can also choose a color for any layer. After defining the stratigraphy, we can assign the geometry from this button, which activates the panel on the right side of the window. The software allows the possibility to directly insert the excavation height and the characteristics of the ground downstream and upstream, or alternatively, to assign manually the coordinates. In this example, we assume to perform an excavation 5 meters deep with the lengths of the ground downstream and upstream equal to 20 meters and 10 meters, respectively. We also assume that the soil is horizontal from both sides, but obviously it's possible to define a different inclination. At this point, the software is able to generate the coordinates and to draw our geometry from the Apply button. The created model is shown in this window. Anyway, the user has the possibility to apply changes to the model by either interacting dynamically with the geometry or changing the table coordinates. The next step is to define the structural part using the Structure button. From the window appearing on the right, it's possible to get access to the materials database previously defined. For example, we can choose the section that we add to the database and assign its length. At this stage, we can assign the length equal to the excavation height, so 5 meters in this case, because the embedment depth will be calculated later by the software. Finally, we can also choose a section for the connection beam that will be built at the top of the wall. In this case, we choose this option, which corresponds to a square section with size of 1 meter. By going on in the model definition, from this button it's possible to account for the presence of an eventual water table. However, in this tutorial we will refer to the condition of dry soil. Therefore, it's possible to take into account the presence of eventual anchors or struts. In this example, we assume that the wall is supported by two rows of anchors at the depths of 1 meter and half and 3 meters and half. Both rows are characterized by an inclination of 15 degrees and a spacing of 1 meter and 60. The friction angle is 20 degrees and the adhesion is nil. It's also necessary to choose the type of anchor and string cores from the database. We can choose if the anchor is active or passive. In case of active anchor, the initial tensile load has to be input. Finally, it's possible to assign the bearing capacity of the anchor. If zero is assigned, the bearing capacity is automatically calculated by the software. Finally, it's possible to define the factor of safety against the collapse of the anchor. This section allows the input of loads. Specifically, this button refers to load on the ground surface. As shown from this window, loads can be lines of strips with the increment of pressure on the wall that is calculated using the Bustinesque solution. Alternatively, loads can also be uniform. In this case, the increment of the pressure on the wall is calculated by multiplying the coefficient of earth pressure for the load. In the example shown in this video, we consider a strip load with intensity of 10 kPa, extending until a coordinate of 5 meters starting from the reference system, which coincides with the external face of the wall. Besides, the button applied forces allows to take into account the presence of eventual forces or moments concentrated at a given section of the wall. Finally, it's necessary to assign some other information when the finite element method is employed. Pressure assigned gives the possibility to manage solutions where the horizontal pressure doesn't have the distribution defined from the classical theories of geotechnical engineering.
From Ks, we can define the modulus of reaction of the subsoil. This modulus can be calculated referring to different theories implemented in the software. In this case, we choose values defined by the user. Finally, from this button, we can specify boundary conditions. Additionally, the software can also perform the analysis by accounting for the construction stages. I will show you this possibility in another video. For now, we will refer directly to the final stage of the problem. Before going on with the analysis, it's necessary to define some settings of the FEM analysis by using the specific button which opens the window on the right. At first, we have the possibility to choose if the embedment depth is calculated by the software or if it's given as input by the user and verified by the software. In this case, the embedment depth has not been defined just because we want the software to calculate it. Therefore, here we have to select yes. Other parameters to define are the maximum linear displacement of the ground which defines the displacement beyond which the soil behavior becomes nonlinear, the displacement tolerance factor that defines the end of numerical iterations, and the type of analysis, linear or not linear. In any case, it's necessary to define also the maximum number of iterations. In this section, we can define the initial value of the embedment depth. This is a first attempt value that will be increased during iterations, until the attainment of an optimal value. The increase of embedment depth is defined in this field. Besides, it's possible to define in how many elements we want to discretize the wall and the number of the node corresponding to the dredge level. Finally, the software requires also the value of displacement associated to the ultimate strength of the soil and the possibility to maintain constant the modulus of soil reaction or to vary it with depth. At this point, it's possible to perform the computation from the corresponding panel. From this button, we can open the analysis window. From this area, it's possible to manage the low combinations for any construction stage. In this example, the first combination refers to the structural verifications, whose coefficients are defined in these tables. Obviously, the user can change them. The second combination concerns instead the geotechnical verifications. In this case, we can observe that the coefficients are different compared to the previous case. Moreover, it's possible to add further combinations, such as the seismic one, which can be associated to both geotechnical and structural verifications. Also in this case, the coefficients defined by the standards are uploaded. For the seismic combination, it's also necessary to define the seismic coefficients, which can be input from here. I just want to remind you that According to many standards, these coefficients are often calculated as a function of the horizontal displacement of the wall due to earthquake. To this purpose, I would like to remind you that the maximum permanent displacement of a wall due to earthquake can be calculated using Drew Seismic, the new software by Geostrum, which so far represents the only available software that is able to perform such a type of analysis without employing advanced numerical techniques that are often unsuitable from the engineering point of view. At this point, we can perform the calculation from this button. Referring to any of the combinations taken into account, the following results are reported. Embedment depth and the maximum values of earth pressure, bending moment and shear force. Besides, the software indicates also the maximum horizontal displacement age calculated on the basis of the spring's deformation and the maximum vertical displacement V calculated under the hypothesis that the soil volume is kept constant. The software also shows the number of executed iterations, the vertical bearing capacity and the uplift safety factor. These two latter are not present in this example because we choose to not calculate the bearing capacity and because the soil is dry. Finally, for any row of anchor, the software shows the factor of safety against pullout, 
calculated as the ratio of the bearing capacity Q and the force in the anchor R. At the end of the analysis, we can inspect the obtained outputs. Here we can check the results of the structural analysis, referring to the calculation of the section of the wall. We can see here, for any considered section, the values of the forces and resistances, along with the calculated steel reinforcements and the verifications of the bending moment and shear strength that, as we can see, are satisfied for any section. We can see these results for all the combinations for which we choose to perform the structural analysis. It's worth pointing out that in this case the design of the section has been performed using the well-experienced algorithm by Choose True for the reinforced concrete sections. For other cases, the software could also employ the algorithm for steel concrete coupling sections. Here we can see the pressure diagrams, for example, those due to the self-weight or due to the load or even the reaction modulus of the soil. Moreover, it's also possible to check the coefficients of active pressure and passive resistance. This button allows us to show the diagrams of earth pressure, bending moment, shear force and wall deflection. By hovering over the diagrams, we can see the numerical values at the different depths. When a final element analysis is performed, we have to consider that the earth pressure is calculated as a function of the wall deflection. Therefore, we have to verify that these pressures do not exceed the values at failure. These results are shown for all the considered combinations. Additionally, this button allows to perform the analysis of the connection beam. Here, the beam is schematized as a continuum beam on more pins, where pins are located in correspondence of the piles. By entering proper values of diameter, spacing, length and design force, the software performs the calculation of deflection, bending moment and shear force. At the end of the calculation, the software also prints a report of the connection beam. Now we can visualize the construction details of the wall by means of carpentries, referring to the prospectus, the sections and the anchors. Also, the global stability analysis can be performed by means of this button which opens the just true software slow. In the calculation panel, after choosing the computation method, we can perform the analysis which provides the value of the safety factor for global stability. Moving back on sheet pile wall design, we can perform also the cost computation of the wall. This is done on the basis of a price list uploaded in the installation folder of the software. However, this list can be updated by the user on the basis of the prices suggested for the considered area. Finally, it's possible to conclude the project with the generation of a report of the analysis. Thank you for your attention, I'll see you in the next video, bye!